Hi there guys, welcome to Flippin' Lizzie. This will be the third video in our installment and I'm doing something different which I've shared with my close friends that most of my life I have prepared for things and practiced before I performed or displayed. And I don't know, I just took some inspiration from one of my favorite YouTuber pickers and she said just dive right in and I don't usually do that. And I decided to do that with the YouTube channel. So I do appreciate you joining in and being patient as I learn the ropes here. Um, the footage that you're gonna see today is at Second Avenue in Columbia, Maryland, which is one of my favorite shopping spots. Um, so enjoy the video. Uh, please engage with it, if you will, by giving me a thumbs up, a like, a share, putting a comment. Uh, one of my friends recently posted one of his favorite jokes and that's totally fine. And of course, subscribe if you would. There's no obligation to subscription, but it really does help me out and helps out the channel. So tuning in to Second Avenue shortly. Hope we find some good stuff. Here we are at Second Avenue in Columbia. They have these tiered tables when you first walk in the door and I don't think I've ever actually found anything there but I just wanted to kind of set the stage for you. <laughs> Maybe we'll only go uphill from here. This was actually a really nice piece, but it was broken and at first I wasn't sure because it has such an unusual um, mouth to it. And I did not know that mark and I didn't look it up because it was broken, so it didn't really matter that much. They always have a lot of vases and figurines in this area. Sometimes the items are eye-catching but I haven't found anything that I thought was a real knock it out of the park type item. This little hedgehog was really cute though. I think this is Princess House. Working on the camera work for you guys. And I just didn't think that that was enough of a uh, profit margin to pick that up. And I do see those frequently, so I wasn't super excited about picking that up. These San Francisco little plates are cool looking, but they've been floating around for weeks. And I wasn't quite sure if these were giraffes and if that one's broken. I think they were napkin rings and there were only three. And I don't know anyone who uses only three napkin rings. But those wooden animal napkin rings are pretty good. If you can get a set of six or eight or even more especially with different animals. I feel like people really do like those. One of my favorite pickers on YouTube has me hooked on ashtrays. You might know who he is. He picks in Virginia. And this one, I, I guess you got to pick your price. But those weren't very special. I just wanted to see what they said on them. One was obviously blank or clear. I do tend to find a lot in the first few aisles at this particular shop. And I am, I am such a sucker for these mid-century serving pieces. I always buy them. This one had George Briard vibes, but it didn't seem to have a mark. Um, again, I'm trying really hard to show you it as I look at it with the naked eye, but it's tricky when you're trying to film it because the camera gets in the way. So these are things that you would never know until you tried it. I wanted to peel this just to see if the bottom was clear. Um, these looked kind of run of the mill, but they were really colorful and sweet, but they all had that cloudy scratched up bottom and I don't think uh, they were worth flipping. But they'd be nice if you had your own collection. That one was really nice actually. I tried to really show you guys what I was looking at and show you some of the things that I really didn't want to look at. I'm not really sure what this was. I thought it was a bottle of oil, but I don't think so. And here is a matching piece that goes with the other one. And I believe I did not end up leaving with the one that has a wheelbarrow base. It was just a little too kitschy, whereas the other one was a little more classic, mid-century modern. This looks like a tourist piece and I did put it in the cart briefly. I think it was like soapstone, like a trinket box. And I put it in the cart because there was something inside it and I wanted to see what it was. And it was like, I don't know, maybe a petrified Ritz cracker, which I don't think I caught on film and now I'm really sad. But just trust me, 
did not add value to that soapstone trinket box. This was really cool, but I wasn't really sure there was a huge market. If it were just a fireman's helmet, maybe, but it was so specific. And this is a Kate Spade box, which went in my cart briefly. I figured I could always edit the cart later at the thrift store. I wasn't really sure if it was a box all by itself or just a box that you would get if you bought a Kate Spade item. I didn't end up buying it because it turned out it was like a Kate Spade jewelry box that you would buy jewelry in, but not a very valuable storage box to keep around the house or resell. This was really cute and I think maybe it was like a little oil lamp, but I'm not sure and I don't think it made the final cut, but it was adorable. I feel like that bee motif is really popular right now. You never really know what you're gonna find at these stores and I have learned that you do have to eventually slow down and take your time and move things out of the way. If you just scan with your eyes, you will miss things. And that's okay if you only have a few minutes to shop, but if you're sort of making a specific trip to find treasures, you're gonna have to, you know, dig, bring the, bring the proverbial shovel. That is actually really hard to do when you're filming, by the way, but I think I'll get better at it as I practice. This face was just so memorable. I had to share it. And I love trinket boxes, but I really don't pick up as many as I used to because they do not sell very quickly for me. They're not huge money makers normally, so I don't list them online that often. I usually put them in my antiques booth and they really, they don't tend to move fast. That tray was a little bit amateurish, but like really good amateur painting and it almost came home with me, but it was huge. This was like a little ceramic plaque or maybe a trivet, kind of like had an 80s vibe. And I think this did make the final cut, but it was an accident because you can see I'm tucking it in my bag of bags. And so it never made the edit portion of my shopping trip until I unpacked everything and then I just bought it. I don't know what this is. Is it like a taco holder? I don't think it's a bookend. I don't, I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. Now I love the um, vase and planter section, but as I recall, tonight was not a stellar night in this department. I'm actually going to move to a different location in my space here while I walk you through this. So this unicorn mug was really cool. A real novelty mug, really colorful, and it was in really good condition. So it made the cut. I actually do buy single mugs. I think I told you guys that in another video because they do sell well for me locally in my antique shop booth. Sorry about the creaky stairs. I'm expecting a noisy family member to arrive any moment and I didn't wanna mess up the voiceover. Again, I'm looking at these vases and not super impressed and also super shocked by that price of $9.99 on this tiny metal vase. I just didn't think it was that special. These can be pretty valuable if they have the lid. Um, I guess it's cabbage, but it, some people call them lettuce bowls or terrines and they become popular again but there was no lid for this one so it didn't really make sense and here's this bottle again from last week it's chipped and I don't have a clue about it but I pick it up every time it has really cool colors and texture and this was actually a beautiful I hope I show you more of it <laughs> oh no I was really into looking at it this was a really beautiful vase hammered brass but it had a huge dent and I was not confident that I could hammer out the dent that had been hammered in, so I put it back. And this went in my cart for a short time, but it actually was a little bit crudely executed. 
It was signed, and I normally look up these names, but I decided instead to rely upon my experience with these types of items, and these particular pastel Native American vases don't actually sell that well for me. So I think I put that one back because it wasn't very... Um, it wasn't very detailed work. It was a little more crude than you normally see. Clear glass. Not everyone's favorite. I cannot remember what these said. They just looked interesting, but they didn't seem to have a wide appeal, as I recall. Now these, I mean, it's Friday for me here, so this kind of glass definitely has some appeal. And they felt really good in the hand. And I believe they had a sticker that said uh, recycled glass made in Mexico. So that's good. I believe these are Jeanette glasses. Look what dishwashers do to vintage glassware. Show this clip to your husband or wife or roommate and remind them not to do that. These pieces have lasted for 50, 60 years. We cannot damage them in the dishwasher. One of my dad's best friends was a great picker. He passed away a few years ago. And uh, he specialized in fishing lures and equipment. And I almost bought this mug just because it made me think of him. And this was, oh gosh, how do you pronounce this name? Vaktusbach? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, I know it's German and it doesn't look like what I just said, but it's something along those lines but there was only one. And even when I used Google Lens, I could not find that mug. And so I believe I actually put it back. Um, it took a little ride with me for a little while. I took it for a ride. This was a modern mug, kind of cute. Um, the people who were shopping tonight at this particular location were really in their own worlds. They were blocking aisles and driving on the wrong side of the aisle and hogging entire sections, even though they were talking on the phone loudly and weren't actually shopping. So I definitely had to um, navigate around them carefully. And I'm sure I didn't show any annoyance. I'm sure I was diplomatic and kept my poker face. But I couldn't help but look because I have found so many collectible, rare, valuable mugs here. And I really like this one, this um, San Diego mug. Please show it. Thank you, Liz. It kind of reminded me of Eau de Giri, but it was not marked. And it is kind of a smaller tribe that wants a San Diego mug. And so I'd have to put it online and it's going to cost me a lot to ship it. Shipping is crazy right now. If I packed it properly, it would probably cost me $8 to ship it. And how much am I going to get for that mug? So I put it back and it made me a little bit sad. But not as sad as paying $8 shipping on a $12 item would make me. These were really pretty. They look like some kind of maybe Japanese art pottery. I have no idea. Kind of had an 80s vibe. There was a signature, but it was like this sort of heavy ceramic. And I I didn't want to fall down a rabbit hole of researching this potter. And I probably would never find out who made it. And so I left it behind. If it had been like stoneware, I think I would have kept it. I would have kept it in my cart. And I know there are some valuable coasters out there, but... This like sort of 80s, 90s grapes motif on these just, but I wasn't feeling it. This was really pretty. I don't buy a lot of things like that, but that one was really nice. Oh, but look, a serious crack, like bring in like the medical examiner type crack. I just like the color of that, but it was literally an empty candle jar that they were trying to sell us. And I, don't, I should have showed you what the price was. This was kind of nice, speckled, bamboo, mid-century, deco sort of picture. They don't sell that great in my booth. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it was pretty tall, so shipping it was not going to be fun. Here's this grapes. 
picture that I looked at last week. And for some reason, I really do like that one. It has a Dionysus vibe or something. This was so sweet. It reminded me of one of my best friends who loves strawberries. Oh, that was very sweet. I think I might have picked that up if it didn't say Virginia. Because when it narrows the focus like that, or the appeal like that, um, I don't like it. I know a lot of people like cardinals, but um, do I want to sell to only the people who like cardinals and Virginia? So this was signed, but the place it was like commemorating didn't seem like a valuable niche, shall we say. I, I normally grab signed stuff. So these looked vintage, but they were actually modern. I'm almost positive. But they looked so beautiful and they definitely remind me of like serving platters that your grandmother might have. They were in great condition. And then this mark looked new too. I didn't end up comping them. Look at the size of them. They'd have to be really special for me to want to ship them. I don't think they were. Maybe that was a mistake on my part. I don't know what this was. I meant to look it up and I never did. It really had an interesting shape. I'm always drawn to the teak and in this case, good wood pieces with that beautiful wood grain. But this one was missing the like cheese dome, the glass dome that protects what you're eating, serving. This tray is super cute. I did buy this tray. It does have some chipping to the lacquer, but the birds on it. As one of the most famous YouTubers says, it's got a bird on it. So I really just had to grab it with the birds. This was very rustic. Um, it was kind of cute though, but cute doesn't pay the bills. This was really cool, but it had, um, it said Ecuador on it. So again, it's uh, narrowing the field of appeal, shall we say. Um, a copper dish is, has wide appeal, but a copper dish that says Ecuador, maybe not as much. And this was so heavy that I couldn't really do much with it. I did the tap test. It was kind of expensive and I wasn't really sure that that silhouette was something that people would like. I do like copper pieces. That one was kind of interesting. It looked like part of maybe like a like a chafing dish set, but it could have been a votive holder. I, yeah, I guess this one was a candle holder. And I don't really know what was going on there. I, it looked familiar, but I couldn't place it. I don't think it was valuable all by itself. I'm currently walking around my house doing this voiceover because my dog keeps following me and he tends to be noisy and I'm trying to get away from him. So if you hear the floors creaking or his tags jingling, it's because I'm trying to escape and he won't let me. These uh, Brittany Spaniels are known for wanting to stay close to their owners. I always buy these, um, what are they called? Textile spools. People love decorating with them, the plain wood and the nostalgia of them. Oh, and I picked up this little uh, Native American artwork, but only briefly because I did comp it and I think they were selling online for like maybe like $19. And I think it was three or $4 and I just didn't think it was going to be worth it. And these were amazing, but like, I don't know, two feet high, 18 inches high. Um, oh, I guess I didn't focus in on that very well. I really like this little spiral of brass around the center, but they were so huge, there was no way I could chip them. And I thought they were a little bit of a specialty item. Candle holders that tall. One of these was all smashed up, but they were kind of neat. I don't know if they were like a vintage Pier 1. This was really pretty. I've been more and more drawn to some of these Capodimonte type pieces. I don't think this one is Capodimonte, but it reminds me of it but they're almost always damaged. Oh, the noisy family member is here. I gotta lay low. And then it said Avon, and then I was over it completely. I've had some of these block vases before, but this one did have several small chips to the edges. 
so I, I didn't pick it up. And I love the glaze on this, but it must have weighed about eight pounds. I did want to show you the glaze. I think it was Raku type pottery, but maybe like a student piece because it was exceptionally heavy and its form was a little primitive. This was really cool. I've sold flamingo pieces by this company before. I think it's Sarsaparilla. I, I can't remember if I show it on the screen or not, um, but I felt that it was missing something. I mean, maybe you sell just the bottom half of a flamingo, but I really want the full bird. I know, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. This piece was actually really beautiful. I don't like clear glass much because it doesn't sell well for me, but this was really heavy and really like clear and smooth and it just had that kind of like ice cube look. But again, I went by the history of my clear glass sales and told myself to walk away. I think these aluminum candle holders are Monet, believe it or not. And I know this because I have one that's been in my booth for about two years, which I think I just pulled out. So I use that to talk myself out of a sale that wasn't wise. I had to smell these because I love to burn candles. And they actually smelled pretty good. They kind of smelled like one of those cold brew sweet cream lattes. Maybe not quite that good because I would have bought I would have bought them. This canister was really neat, but I'm going to show you. It has a huge crack in the lid and I had to feel it to make sure I wasn't seeing things because it does have a bit of a drippy glaze. I was hoping it was a drip and not a crack. Look at this huge bottle. That kind of gives off some Pier 1 vibes too. Look at the price tag though. At $13.99, what am I going to price it at? I didn't see any markings on it that indicated it was worth spending $13.99 on. Now this little section really cracked me up. I felt like maybe you could be a future millionaire if you did the other things, right? If you saved all your money. I don't know, there was something about that montage I liked. This plate was beautiful. It made the cut. I did comp it out. It looked like it was worth picking up and look at the graphics on it. I would love to serve a little mini charcuterie on that. We're kind of starting to wind down here. Like I said, I had to avoid a lot of people on this particular night who were not being very considerate shoppers. So I do thank you guys for joining us. I hope that you will come back, but I also hope that you will hit like, subscribe, or maybe even ring my bell. I comped this plate out. It did not make the cut. It was not worth it, unfortunately. It was super cute. Thanks for checking out that footage. I actually ended up comping and putting a lot of the items back. I don't know if I'm going to do a lot of haul videos to actually show you what I bought or not. And I'm not quite at the stage where I have a total for you or I can throw comps up on the screen for you or anything like that. Um, but it wasn't the very best shopping trip, even though it was still enjoyable. And it is important to remember when you have a career or a hobby that enjoyment is okay. Like right? that's really the ultimate goal. And then the secondary goal is to find something that makes you an instant millionaire. Um, that second thing did not happen during this trip, but I did have a great time. And hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing some of the stuff that I found. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe.